Knöpfst du ne und no. Amen. O come, let us worship and bow down to our King and God. O come, let us worship and bow down to Christ, our King and God. O come, let us worship and bow down to Christ himself, our King and God. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, covering yourself with light as a, with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a curtain. You set the beams of your upper chambers in the waters. Who makes the clouds his chariot? Who walks on the wings of the wind? Who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? <clears throat> you who laid the foundations of the earth so that it should not be moved forever. You covered it with the deep as with the garment. The waters stood above the mountains. And at your rebuke, they fled. At the voice of your thunder, they hastened away. They went up over the mountains. They went down into the valleys to the place which you founded for them. You have set a boundary that they may not pass over, that they may not return to cover the earth. He sends the springs into the valleys. They flow among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. By them the birds of the heavens have their home. They sing among the branches. He waters the hills from his upper chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your works. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and vegetation for the service of man, <clears throat> that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine that makes glad the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread which strengthens man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon, which he planted, where the birds make their nests. The stork has her home in the fir trees. The high hills are for the wild goats. The cliffs are a refuge for the rock badgers. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knows it's going down. You make darkness, and it is night, in which all the beasts of the forest creep about. The young lion roar, lions roar after their prey and seek their food from God. When the sun rises, they gather together and lie down in their dens. Man goes out to his work and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions, this great wide sea, in which are innumerable teeming things, living things, both small and great. There the ships sail about. There is that Leviathan, which you have made to play there. These all wait for you that you may give them food, give them their food in due season. What you give them, they gather in. You open your hand. They are filled with good. You hide your face, they are troubled. You take away their breath, they die, and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth, and it trembles. He touches the hills and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. May my meditation be sweet to him. I will be glad in the Lord. May sinners be consumed from the earth and the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. The sun knows it's going down. You make darkness and it is night. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to you, God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to you, God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to you, God, our hope, O Lord. Glory to you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the stability of all the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy church and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Our Father and Archbishop Nicholas, the Honorable Presbytery of the Diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the laity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the President of our country, for those in civic authority, 
for armed forces and for all the American nation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city and every city and land, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For temperate weather, for the abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those at sea and those who travel by land or air, for the sick and the suffering, for captives and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all tribulation, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, pure, most blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. For to you all glory and worship is befitting to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit now and always, and to the ages of ages. Amen. And let my prayer rise, my prayer rise as the incense in your sight. O Lord, let the lifting of my Sacrifice be, oh, hear me, Lord, hear me, oh, Lord. Out of the depths I've cried to you, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, hear my voice. <laughs> Accept thee our evening prayers, O Holy Lord, and grant us forgiveness of sins. For you alone have shown forth the resurrection to the world. If you will note iniquities, O Lord, Lord, who will stand but with you, there is forgiveness. In 
circles I know you people and encompass her and in her give glory to him who rose from the dead for he is our God who redeemed us from our inequity for your name's sake I have waited for you, O Lord. My soul has waited for your word. My soul has hoped in the Lord. Come, you people, let us praise and worship Christ, <clears throat> glorifying his resurrection from the dead. For he is our God who redeemed the world from the delusion of the enemy. From the morning watch until night, from the morning watch, let Israel hope in the Lord. By your passion, O Christ, we have been freed from passions. And by your resurrection, we have been freed from corruption. Lord, glory to you. For with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Today Hades cried out groaning, What would I had not received the one born of Mary? Or he came upon me and loosed my power. He shattered the gates of rest, the souls which I held captive of old. As God, he raised up glory, O Lord, to your cross and your resurrection. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people. Today, Hades cried out, groaning. My authority is dissolved. I received a mortal as one of the mortals. But this one I am powerless to contain. With him I lose all those over which I had ruled for ages. I help the dead, but behold, he raises up all. Glory, O oh Lord, glory to your cross in your resurrection. For his mercy is evermore and more upon us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Today, Hades cried out groaning, my power has been trampled on, the shepherd has been crucified, and Adam he raised up, I have been deprived of those over whom I rule, and in all those I had power to swallow, I have disgorged. He was crucified, has cleared the tombs. The dominion of death is no more. Glory, O Lord, to your cross and your resurrection. <clears throat> Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The great Moses mystically foreshadowed this day, saying, and God bless the seventh day, for this is the blessed Sabbath. It is the day of rest in which the only begotten Son of God rested from all his works and through the dispensation of death in body he rested and having returned to it again through the resurrection, 
He granted us life eternal as the only good and merciful Lord. Now and never and to the ages of ages. Amen. <coughs> Let us praise Mary the Virgin, for she is the glory of the whole world. She sprang forth from the human race and gave birth to the Master. She is the portal of heaven, the song of the bodiless powers, and the adornment of the faithful. She has been shown forth as heaven, and as a temple of the Godhead, she has broken down the dividing wall of enmity bringing us peace and has opened up the kingdom. Therefore, having her as our anchor of faith, we have an invincible champion, the Lord, born of her. Take courage then, take courage, you people of God, for he as the Almighty will vanquish the enemies. Sophia Murthy, Fosilaron, Aias Doxis, Athanatu Patros Uranium Aium Macaros Isu Christem El Thondes Epitinilium Visin Idondes Hoys Esperinon Hymnumen Pater Aion, Que Aion, Pnevma Theon, Axion Sep, En Pasi, Queris Himnis Ne, Ponesses Ies, Ies, The reading is from the book of Genesis. Wisdom, let us be attentive. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the, night, the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning one day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and separated the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God, God called the firmament heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning a second day. And God said, let all the waters under the heavens be gathered into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered there together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its own kind upon the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its own kind. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning a third day. The reading it's from the book of Jonah. Wisdom, let us be attentive. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up 
report that Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish so that he paid the fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord whirled a great wind upon the sea and there was a mighty tempest on the sea so that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid and each cried to his God and they threw the wares that were on the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had come down to the inner part of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. So the captain came and said to him, What do you mean? What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call upon your God. Perhaps the God will give a thought to us that we do not perish. Then they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. And they said to him, Tell us, on whose account this evil has come upon us? What is your occupation, and where do you come from? What is your country, and of what people are you? And he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid, and said to him, What is this you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then they had said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea grew more and more tempestuous. And he said to them, Take me up and throw me into the sea, then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know that because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not because the sea grew more and more tempestuous to them. Therefore they cried to the Lord, We beseech you, O Lord, let us not perish for this man's life and lay not on us innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it has pleased you. So they took up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they sacrificed to the Lord and made vows. Now the Lord prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I, I cried, and you heard my voice. For you did cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood was round about me. All your waves and all your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out from your presence. How shall I again look upon your holy temple? The waters closed in over me. The deep was round about me. Weeds were wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars uh, closed upon me forever. Yet you did bring up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you, into your holy temple. Those who pay regard to you, uh, sorry, those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their true loyalty. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, praise with sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will, pray, I will pay. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Okay. And the word of the Lord came to Jonah, second time saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began going into the city, going a day's journey, and he cried, Yet three days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown, and the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the great, greatest of them to the least of them. <clears throat> then tidings reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, and covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he made proclamation and published through Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and let them mightily cry to God. Yea, let every 
one turn from his evil way and from the violence which is in his hands. Who knows God? Who knows God may yet repent and turn from his fierce anger so that we perish not. When God saw what they did, how they were turned from their evil way, God repented of the evil which he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. But it dis displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry, and he prayed to the Lord and said, I beseech you, O Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? That is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish, for I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and easy to forgive evil. Therefore now, O Lord, take my life from me, I beseech you, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, do you do well to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat to the east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade until he should see what had become of the city. Then the Lord appointed a plant and made it come up over Jonah that it might be a shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the plant. But dawn came up the next day and God appointed a worm which attacked the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God appointed a sultry east wind and the sun beat down upon the head of Jonah so that he was faint. And he asked that he might die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, do you do well to be angry for the plant? And he said, I do well to be angry, angry enough to die. And the Lord said, you pity the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than a hundred and 20,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also much cattle. The reading is from the book of Daniel. Wisdom, let us be attentive. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and breadth 6 cubits. He set it on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent an assemble of satraps, prefects, and governors, counselors, and treasurers, and justices, and magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces were assembled for the de dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the satraps, prefects, governors, and counselors, and treasurers, and justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces were assembled for the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And the herald pro proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the image which King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down to worship shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, as soon as the peoples heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshiped the golden image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore, at that time, the certain Chaldeans came forwardly and maliciously accused the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down shall be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O, o king, pay no heed to you. They do not worship your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in a furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if you are 
Ready when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, twang-off, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music to fall down and worship the image which I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a fiery furnace. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we worship, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if it not, let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was wont to be heated, and he ordered certain mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their mantles, their tunics, their hats, and their other garments, and they were cast into the burning, fiery furnace. Because the king's order was strict and the furnace was very hot, the flame of the fire slew those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning, fiery furnace, and they walked in the midst of the flame, praising God and blessing the Lord. Then Azarius, standing up, prayed in this manner, and, opened his, and opening his mouth in the midst of the fire, he said, Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, and your name is praised and glorified forever, for you are just in all that you have done for us, and all your works are true. Your ways are right, and all your judgments true, for you have executed true judgments in all the things that you have brought upon us and upon Jerusalem, the holy city of our fathers, for according to truth and judgment, you have brought all these things upon us for our sins. For we have sinned and committed iniquity, departing from you, and we have trespassed in all things and have not obeyed your commandments as you have commanded us, that it might go well with us. Wherefore, all that you have brought upon us and everything that you have done to us, you have done true judgment. You have delivered us into the hands of our enemies who are lawless, most wicked, and hated rebels, and to an unjust king, the most wicked, beyond all that are upon the earth. And now we cannot open our mouths. We have become a shame and a reproach to your servants and to them that worship you. Do not give us up for your name's sake, and do not withdraw your mercy from us for the sake of Abraham, your beloved, and Isaac, your servant, and Israel, Israel, your holy one to whom you have spoken, promising that you would multiply their seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand on the seashore. For we, O Lord, are diminished more than any nation and are bowed low in all the earth this day for our sins. And there is neither at this time a prince or leader or prophet or holocaust, nor sacrifice, nor oblation, nor incense, nor place of first fruits before you find your mercy. By in a contrite heart and humble spirit, let us be accepted, as in the holocaust of rams, the bullocks, and in the thousands of fat lambs. So let our sacrifice be made in your sight this day, that we may follow after you, for there is no shame to those that trust in you. And now, follow you with all your heart, and we fear you and seek your face. Put us not to shame, but deal with us according to your forbearance and according to the multitude of your mercy. Deliver us according to your marvelous works, and give glory to your name, O Lord, and let all them be confounded who show evils to your servants. Let them be disgraced in all your might, and let their strength be broken, and let them know that you are the Lord, and only God, and glorious over all the now the king's servants that had cast them in ceased not to heat the furnace with naphtha, tow, pitch, and dry sticks. And the flame mounted up above the furnace nine and forty cubits, and it broke forth and burned the Chaldeans who were near the furnace. But the angel of the Lord went down with Azarius and his companions into the furnace, and he drove the flame of the fire out of the furnace, and made the midst of the furnace like the blowing of a wind beneath dew, and fire did not touch them at all, nor troubled them nor did them any harm. Then these three, as with one mouth, praised and glorified and blessed God in the furnace, saying, 
Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, the most praised and most exalted through all ages. And blessed is the name of your glory, the holy and most praised, and exalted above all through all ages. Blessed are you in the holy temple of your glory, the most praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed are you who looks over the depths and are seated on the cherubim, and the most praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, the most praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven and praised and glorified through all ages. Ton kirion imnite keri peripsute ispandas tu seonas. Praise the Lord and exalt him to all ages. Ton kirion imnite keri peripsute ispandas tu seonas. All the works of the Lord, bless the Lord, praise and exalt him to all ages. Ton kirion imnite kei peripsute ispandas tu seonas. Bless the Lord, angels of the Lord, and the heavens of the Lord. Ton kirion imnite kei peripsute ispandas tu seonas. Bless the Lord, you waters that are above the heavens and all the powers of the Lord. Ton kirion imnite kei peripsute ispandas tu seonas. <coughs> Bless the Lord, the sun and moon and stars of heaven. Ton kirion imnite kei peripsute ispandas tu seonas. Bless the Lord, height and darkness, nights and days. O oh, praise you, the Lord, and exalt him to all ages. Bless the Lord, showers and dew and all winds. Ton kirion imnite kei peripsute ispandas tu seonas. Bless the Lord, dews and snows, frost and cold. Ton kirion imnite kei peripsute ispandas tu seonas. Bless the Lord, earth, mountains, and hills, and all things growing in it. Oh, praise you the Lord, and exalt him to all ages. Bless the Lord, sons of men, bless him, and let Israel bless. Ton kirion imnite kei peripsute ispandas tu seonas. Bless the Lord, spirits and souls of the righteous, holy and humble men of heart. Oh, praise you, the Lord, and exalt him to all ages. Bless the Lord, apostles and prophets, and witnesses of the Lord. Ton kirion imnite kei peripsute ispandas tu seonas. We bless the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Lord. Oh, praise you, the Lord, and exalt him to all ages. We praise and exalt the Lord of all ages. We praise, we bless, and worship the Lord. Ton kirion imnite kei peripsute ispandas tu seonas. 
We praise and we glorify the Lord to all the ages. Ton kirion imnite, kei peripsute, is pandas tu seona. Let us pray to the Lord. A mercy. For you, our God, are holy, and to you we ascribe glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and always, and to the ages of ages. Amen. O Jesus Christ, As many of you were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Hallelujah. O Jesus Christ, Let us be attentive. Let all the earth worship you and sing of you. All the earth sing with joy unto the Lord. Wisdom. The reading is from St. Paul's Epistle to the Romans. Let us be attentive. Brethren, do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so also uh, should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our Lord. Arise, O assembly of God's he judges in the midst of God. unjustly and favor the persons of sinners. Arise, O God, 
judge the earth, for you shall inherit all the Gentiles. I said you are gods and you are all sons of the most high Anasta Let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all of you. And with your spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Let us be attentive. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb, and behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guard shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know you seek Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, even as he said. Come see the place where they lay the Lord, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there you will see me. And while they were going, behold, some of the guards came into the city and reported to the chief priests all the things that had happened. When they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, Tell them his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if it comes to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure. So they took the money and did as they were instructed. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, even to of the age. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. 
Grant that being ever protected by your power we, to you, we may ascribe glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and always into the ages of ages. Amen. <clears throat> Let all mortal Stand in fear and tremble. Giving all thoughts to the things of.
ευχαριστή Κύριος ο Θεός εν τη βασιλεία αυτού πάντο εν την και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων. Amen. May the Lord our God Remember all of us in his kingdom now and always and to the ages of ages. Amen. The many Cherubim and the six wing seraphim covering their faces, singing the hymn Alleluia. Το θέντο τιμιον θωρών του κυρίου δε ηθόμε. Η πέτουρη στην αίμα σα από πάση λήψε ω οργή κίνδυνο και ανάγκη του κυρίου δε ηθόμε. Αντιλαβώ σώσον ελέησον και διαφύλαξον ημάς ο Θεός τη συγχάρητη. Κύριε ελέησον την ημέραν πάσαν τη λίαν αγίαν ειρηνικήν και ένα μάρτητον παρά του Κυρίου έτησο μεθά. Άρα σου Κύριε Άγγελον ειρήνης πιστών οδηγών φυλακά των ψυχών και το σωμά των ημών παρά του Κυρίου έτησο μεθά. Άρα σου Κύριε. Συγγνώμη και άφεση των αμαρτιών και των πλημελημάτων ημών παρά του Κυρίου Eti so metha. Bara su kirie. Ta kala ke sim ferenda tes psike simon ke rini to kosmo para tu kiriu. Eti so metha. Bara su kirie. Πολύπον κρόνον τη ζωή Σιμών εν ειρήνη και μεκτανή εκτελέσε παρά του κυρίου έτσι σώμεθα. Παρά σου κυρία. Χριστιανά τα τέλη τη ζωή Σιμών εν οδυνά να πέσκει τα ειρήνικα. Και καλή να απολογία αν τένει επί του φόβορου βήματος του Χριστού έτησο μεθά. Πάρα σου Κύριε. Τη 
της Παναγίας ακράντου υπερευλογημένης εν δόξου δεσποινής ημών Θεοτόκου και αη Παρθένου Μαρίας με τα πάντων των Αγίων μην ομονεύσαντες εαυτούς και αλληλούς και πάσαν την ζωήν ημών Χριστό το Θεό ετ προσφέρομεν Through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your holy good and life giving Spirit, now and always, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be with all of you. And to your Spirit. Let us love one another so that with one mind we may confess. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity, one in essence, and I believe in one God. Tas tiras, tas tiras en Sophia proskome. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not made, of one essence with the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, who was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary, and became man. He was crucified for us in the Pontius Pilate, and he suffered and was buried, and he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy, in the Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, life who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father, the Son, the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke to the prophets. In one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead, and life is to come. Amen. Stomen kalo, stomen metafovu, proskemen tinagien anoforan, and it any prosperity. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. It is fitting It is fitting and right to sing to you, to bless you, to praise you, to give thanks to you, and to worship you in all places under your dominion. For you are God beyond describing, beyond comprehending, neither to be seen nor conceived, forever existing, forever the same. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, you brought us into being out of nothingness. And when we had fallen, raised us up again, leaving nothing undone, until you could lead us to heaven and grant us your future kingdom. For all these things we thank you, and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, for all these blessings, both known and unknown, manifest or hidden, that have been given to us. We thank you also for this liturgy, which you have deemed worthy to accept from our hands, even though you are surrounded by thousands of archangels and tens of thousands of angels, by the holy orders of the cherubim and the seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, soaring on their wings. Singing, 
proclaiming, shouting the victory hymn, and saying, Aios, 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 these blessed powers which you love, Master Cloud, and say, Holy, Holy are you, this love of Lord, who gave her begotten Son, that everywhere of belief shall not perish, but of eternal life, having come and having filled the divine plan for us, up from the life of the world. He took bread in his holy claim, pure and blameless hands, gave thanks, blessed and sanctified it, breaking it, gave it to his disciples and apostles, saying, Faiete tutum est ito soma, toi perimon clomen on is officin, a martion take it. This is my body which is broken for you, for the remission of sin. Likewise, after the supper, sing. Fiet ex aftu pandes, tutu est ito emma mut et iscenis the athikis, toi perimon Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Amen. Remembering, therefore, the saving commandment and all that came to pass for our sake, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the enthronement of the right hand, and the second and glorious coming offering you these gifts from your own gifts in all and for all. Once again, we offer the spiritual worship without the shedding of blood. We ask, pray, and, and entreat you, Lord. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here now offered. O Theos, elasitimi tomartolo que le sonme. May God be gracious to me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. O Theos, lest the community to Martoloki lay son, men. And make this bread the precious body of your Christ. Amen. And that which is in this cup the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Changing them both by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So that those partake of them may bring vigilance of soul, forgiveness of sins, communion of the Holy Spirit, fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you not for judgment or condemnation. Again, we offer the spiritual worship for those who are going to the rest in faith. Forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and for every righteous spirit who has completed this life in faith. Especially for our most holy, blessed, and glorious Lady the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. Que para dice logique, parceni con cafquiman, existe o se sarcoci, que pedion yegonen, o proeon oni parjonce o simon. Thank you. 
God, stand on Plati Among the first, Lord, remember our Father and Archbishop Nicholas, grant that he may serve you, Holy Church, in peace. Keep him safe, honorable, and in health for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. Also remember, Lord, those whom each of us has prayed for, and all your people. And all your people. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise the most exalted and majestic name, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and always, and to the ages of ages. Amen. And may the mercies of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. And with your spirit. Having commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the precious gifts here now offered and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And that our merciful God who received them on his holy and celestial and invisible altar under a breath of spiritual fragrance may send down upon us in his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all tribulation, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by your grace. That this whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. For the forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask of the Lord. Grant Things that are good and profitable unto our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. That we may complete the remainder of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. That the end of our lives may be Christian without pain, blameless and peaceful and for a good defense before the dread judgment seed of Christ. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. Entreating for the unity of the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. And deem us worthy, O Master, that we may be boldly, without condemnation, dare to call upon you, the heavenly God, Father, and to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Peace be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads unto the Lord. To you, O Lord. We give thanks to Invisible King. In your infinite power you fashioned all things, and in the abundance of your mercy you brought all things from nothing into being. Look down now, O Master from heaven, on those who have bowed their heads to you, for they have bowed not before flesh and blood, but before you, the awesome and living God. Will you then, Master, order what lies ahead according to each one's need? Say with those at sea, accompany the travelers, heal the sick as physician of our souls and bodies. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your holy, good, life-giving Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Proskomen taiaetis, aiis, the holy gifts for the holy people of God. One is holy. The Lamb of God is broken and shared, broken but not divided, forever eaten, yet Lord. never consumed. Jesus sanctifying those who partake of him. Lord, the fullness of the cup of faith and the spirit of God, the Father, Amen. Blessed is the fervor of your saints now and always and forever and ever. Amen. Happy gracious to me, a sinner, mercy upon my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, forgive me, no worthy priest. Behold, I approach Christ, our mortal King God, the most holy and precious body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as given to me, Andrew, the unworthy priest, for the remission of sins and for life everlasting. Amen. I believe and confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners. Behold, I have once again approached Christ, our mortal I also, I also believe that this Lord is truly Savior, your Christ. pure body, and this is truly your precious blood. Me, Andrew, the unworthy Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy, mercy upon me, and forgive my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation to partake of your pure mysteries for the forgiveness of sins and for life eternal. Amen. How shall I, who am unworthy, enter into the splendor of your sins. If I dare to enter into the bridal chamber, my clothing will accuse me, since it is not a wedding garment. And being bound up, I shall be cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Loving Master, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation because of my unworthiness but for the cleansing and sanctification of soul and body and to the pledge of future life and kingdom. It is good for me to cling to God and to place in him the hope of my salvation. Receive me today, Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not reveal your mystery to your adversaries, nor will I give you a kiss as did Judas, but as the thief I confess to you, Lord, remember me in your kingdom.
the forward the o peace the os gear got peace pro self the day with the fear of god with faith and with love draw near thank you the servant of god we need to do as receive the body and blood of our lord and savior jesus christ for the remission of sins and for life everlasting amen met the lamvani idoli to the o Ioana, soma gami su Christu, isafi sin mark ion kezuin, eonion ami, metalam vani odulus tu theu. Mantos. Mantos. Soma gami su Christu, isafi sin mark ion kezuin, eonion ami. Oh, beautiful. Nice. Tell her I said hello. Metalam vani odulus tu theu. Soma gami su Christu, isafi sin mark ion kezuin, eonion ami, metalam vani odulus tu theu. Andrea, soma gami su Christu. The servant of God, receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and for life everlasting. Amen. The servant of God, Joshua, receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and for life everlasting. The servant of God, receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and for life everlasting. Amen. The servant of God, John, receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and for life everlasting. Amen. The servant of God. Angeliki, soma kemi su Christu, isafi sin martion kezuin, eonion amin, metalamvani idulit to theu. Soma kemi su Christu, isafi sin martion kezuin, eonion amin, metalamvani odulus to theu. John, receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and for life everlasting. Amen. The servant of God. George receives the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and for life everlasting. Amen. So it's not the old slow so it came low. He's on King Clitonomian to Lord Savior people and bless your inheritance. Remember me, O Lord, when you come into your kingdom remember us O merciful one when you come into your kingdom remember me when you come to your kingdom. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be over all the earth. Blessed is our God, always, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us be attentive having received the divine, holy, life-giving, awesome mysteries of Christ. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Amen. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, in your grace. Lord, have mercy. Having asked this whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and free of sin, let us commend ourselves and each other and our whole life under Christ our God. To you, O Lord. We thank you, loving Master, benefactor of our souls, this day have once again made us all worthy of your heavenly and immortal mysteries. Make straight our path, keep us firmly in awe of you, guard our lives, keep us steady on our way through the prayers of the glorious Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary and of all the saints. For you, our supplications, for you, our sanctification, to you we offer up the glory 
of the Father and the Son <clears throat> and the Holy Spirit now and always <clears throat> into the ages of ages. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Amen. have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Father, give the blessing. O oh Lord, who blesses those who bless you and sanctifies those who put their trust in you, save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church and sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them by your divine power and forsake us not who set our hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to all the churches, to the priesthood, to our civil authorities, to our armed forces, and to all your people. For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from you, the Father of lights. And to you we ascribe glory, thanksgiving, and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and always and to the ages of ages. Amen. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord our God from this time forth forever and forever. To onomakiri evlohimenon apotuni ke. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. May the blessing of the Lord and his mercy come upon all of you through his divine grace and love for mankind always, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, O God, our hope, glory to you. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead through the intercessions of his all-pure and holy mother, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable bodiless powers in heaven, the supplications of the honored glorious prophet and foreigner John the Baptist, the holy glorious and all lauded apostles, the holy glorious and victorious martyrs, our saintly and God-bearing fathers, the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us as a good and loving and merciful God. Seated. Well, good morning. I know you can't see me that well behind the, the grave or the tomb of Christ, but uh, at any rate, good morning, Kalimera, to all of you. Just a few announcements and a quick word to all of you. First and foremost, as always, I like to thank the chanters and those who read the beautiful Psalms today. Joshua is getting more courage now as he sings, so I've really to see his matriculation as he continues to mature and then become the next John, John the Great, John the Great Chanter. That's his protege, his, his predecessor right there. I'm teasing, John, many years to you, many years, many years. Um, in today's service, it was replete with a lot of imagery, um, a lot of beautiful psalms that were read, as mentioned, but one in particular that I wanted to share with all of you was from the book of Daniel, specifically with King Nebuchadnezzar and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three holy youths. To give you a small synopsis, again, for those who maybe have forgotten, was King Nebuchadnezzar made this beautiful golden idol and directed and insisted that the three holy youths worship this golden idol. And of course, as we know, they did not. And they were thrown into the fiery furnace. As I thought about that today, there are many King Nebuchadnezzars in our world today. There are many pilots that we just heard about yesterday, last night, that ask, what is truth? Because my friends, truth today has become relative. Whatever you believe is your truth. 
And if we dare question your truth, we're labeled a racist, a bigot, and so forth and so on. The fact is, my friends, is that we all worship at some sort of altar. We all worship, in a sense, these small idols. Maybe it's our phone. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's lust. Maybe it's an addiction of some sort. We are kind of like, in a sense, not all of us, but some, like the Joseph of Arimathea's that worship in secret. That it's just something that we do on Sundays or doing Holy Week or doing Easter, but when we get out into the world, oh, we don't practice our faith. We don't share the good news of Christ with others. We keep that to ourselves. The King Nebuchadnezzars of today tell us to do that, to be quiet about our faith. But we see the exact opposite happen with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who said no. And what did they do, my friends? What did they do? They were thrown in the fiery furnace and they began to sing hymns to God, which were beautifully chanted by John and Joshua today. They began to sing praises unto God. And why was that? Because they knew that the King Nebuchadnezzar's and the pilots of today have no authority. They may have loud voices. They may tell us to do this or to do that or to say this or be quiet or don't share this or that and so forth and so on. But at the end of the day, God has all authority and power. And because of their faithfulness, <clears throat> because of their trust, because of the fact that they would not keep quiet, they kept singing and praising God, which was probably to King Nebuchadnezzar. He couldn't stand it. And isn't that what happens when we do the same thing to others today? In a good way, of course, in a loving way. They try to silence us even more. I don't mean to be political today. That's not my point. But I can see the crossover between the two happening in our world today, the pilots of today that question what is truth in this postmodern, secular society that we live in. Our job as Orthodox Christians is to stay in the fire, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, to stay in the fire. Notice they didn't run away from the fire. They didn't lash out at the people or King Nebuchadnezzar and called him names or this or that and try to seek vengeance because they knew the vengeance would come from God. And at the end of that story, as we know, what ended up happening? He rescued them. That the fires became like dew. That they became peaceful and brought calm into their hearts. And he rescued them. Perhaps, my friends, you're in a fire today. Maybe it's a fire of lust. Maybe it's a fire of alcoholism, an addiction of some sort. Maybe. It's a fire in your home with your spouse. Maybe it's at work with your employees. I, I don't know what it is. But I know who knows. Because God knows everything in our hearts. Nothing is hidden from Him. We think we can hide things from God, but we're fooling ourselves. He knows our innermost being. He knew you in your mother's womb. He knows every single hair in your head. You were created in His image and likeness. And He knows you. He knows me. He knows what we need. And the only thing He asks us to do is two things. And if there's two things I want you to remember today in this small little sermon, it's this. Number one, wherever you are in life, because listen, we're all dealing with something. Nobody has the perfect life. We're all dealing with something. Number one, stay in the fire. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Stay there. Like Christ stayed in the fire in the Garden of Gethsemane, he could have easily ran away and said, the heck with this. I'm out of here. I'm not going to the cross. Are you kidding me? I know what they're going to do to me. But he voluntarily went. Because like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he knew who his father was above, and he would have the last say. And something good would come out of it. 
What I have found in my life, my friends, is that when we stay in the fire, we don't turn to things of the world that are going to numb our feelings, right? Because that's why we do what we do. We check out, in a sense, mentally because we don't want to deal with the stresses of life. So I'm going to have a drink or look uh, on, at pornography online or I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. Yes, it may give you a temporary reprieve. Or even food, for example, eating food, right? Binge eating. Materialism. It may give you a temporary high that dopamine floods our system, right? If it's, it's a feel-good hormone. It gives us a temporary high. But what ends up happening is two things. Number one is that it leaves us empty and even emptier the more we do it. And then secondly, we want more of it because we want more of that high. So maybe just looking online at these pictures, okay, for a while that gives us that high, but we're going to want more of it. And so we do more riskier types of behavior. I know I'm going way off on a tangent here, but as I was thinking about these things, I was wanting to share that with you today. But again, number one, stay in the fire. And number two, the last thing is at some point in time when we're faithful, when we're trusting in God, wherever we are in life, and it's happened to me in my life, so I, I'm a living testimony because I am the first among sinners. I've made my own mistakes, but I've learned from my mistakes, and I know this, that God will deliver you from the fire eventually. It may not happen overnight. It may not happen in a week. It may not happen in a month or whenever. Because listen, our time isn't God's time. His ways are not our ways. Sometimes he allows us to stay in the fire because he's refining us like a gem, like a jewel. And we know for those who have worked with metal or gems that the, sometimes we have to stay in that fire for a little while for it to be refined to the point where it is shiny, it is new, it is, the, it is what it needs to be. And so wherever you are in your fire today, think about it that way. Sure, you want to escape it, I get it, right? We all do. I don't want to be here. This thing is hard. This thing, this thing is tough. This person said this thing about me, and, and I'm going to run away. Whatever it is, it's our natural human reaction to want to get away from those things, right? And, and numb out on other things to help us. That's common. That's, that's normal. That's new for some. Right? But we're not allowing God to do the work in our life that we need. And so our response should always be like Christ when he said, Lord, I don't like this. If there's any way we can get around it, glory be to God, but let your will be done in my life. That's what our response should be every single time. Lord, I don't like this. I don't know why you have me here. I don't know, know, know the reason. I can't explain it. I don't know, but I know you know. And I know at the right time and the right place, you will deliver me from this fire. And when he does, friends, you'll come out a better person. Happier, fuller, more peaceful in your life. So allow God to do that work in your life. Don't take away that blessing that he's trying to give to you in your life by trying to run away from it. And that's not, again, to minimize how difficult it is. Yes, it is difficult, and it may be difficult for a while. But the one thing I've learned in life is that nothing ever stays the same. Things always change, and hopefully they change for the good. And finally, I'll add a third thing to this little sermon today, a third thing. May it be a joyful suffering. Like Shadrach, Mejak, and Abednego, may we have enough faith where we can sing praises to God in, in the midst of our storms in life. May we be able to sing uh, from the top of our lungs to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He hasn't turned a, a, a blind eye to your pain. He hasn't turned a deaf ear to what you're dealing with in your life. He is aware of it all. But we need to be persistent. Keep saying the prayers. Keep singing the hymns. 
like St. Paul, keep asking the Lord over and over and over again. You know, in, in the gospel, in the epistle, he says, I have prayed to the Lord three times about this. And of course, three times doesn't seem like a lot, but I think what he's referencing is multiple times. And what is God's response to him? My grace is sufficient for you, and my power is perfected in weakness. Meaning, when he has you in that time, in this place that's uncomfortable, or the thorn that's in your side, he will never give you more than you can handle. He knows your breaking point. And will always provide a way out for you. Always. Always. If you look at our spiritual life, mine included, it's not linear, right? It's not just straight. It has the peaks and the valleys. We fall, we get up. We fall, we get up. We fall, we get up. We sin, we get up. We sin, we get up. That's what it means to work out our own salvation, as St. Paul says. It's not what our Protestant friends think, once saved, always saved. No. That's not salvation. Salvation is a work in progress. And that's why we have the church services. That's why we have the sacraments. That's why we have the evangelion. That's why we have the oil. That's why we have all of these wonderful things that the church uses as means to heal. This church, the, the, the great ark, the, the Noah's ark, and I said, the hospital, it's, 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 a, it's a hospital for the soul. And the priest, the deacons, the bishops, we are the doctors of the soul that administer these wonderful, wonderful sacraments and offer words of encouragement that I'm offering you today so that you can be made whole and new again. And so, with that being said, I'll stop there. I share these words with you out of love for all of you. Because that's what we're called to do as clergy. It saddens me, and I must tell you this, and I'll close with this, that some of our clergy don't do that. That don't speak the truth. That don't address the issues of today's times. It didn't stop St. Paul. It didn't stop Jesus. It didn't stop all these wonderful saints that you see on this wonderful icon screen that spoke up for their faith. They are models for us to live by, and so forth, so forth, and so on. We need to do the same thing. That's what Christ says when he says to be salt of the earth, light of the world. We don't take a light and hide it somewhere, as we know in Scripture, but we put it out there for all to see. And so, speaking of light, may you be the light. When you take the light home tonight, when we joyfully say Christ is risen and we light each other's candle communally here, may you take that light out into the world. You don't have to give a sermon like I'm, I'm, I'm preaching today, but live your faith. Allow others to see it. Allow others to marvel because of your faith. And by doing so, you're giving glory to God who sees and knows your intentions and will bless you and give you strength and fulfill your life fill, fill your life and fill your cup to the point where you can say my lord and my god like saint thomas said my lord and my god may the peace mercy and grace of the holy trinity be with all of you amen please come forward